think I've had this camera turned on in at least a week. Maybe two? Wait, what's the last video I filmed with this? I think it was the F3 motor disassembly. Man. <laughs> Anyways, uh, strange mission at the moment. Let me turn on some lighting here. Turn on the beer. Beer isn't responding. Please check its network connection and power supply. Beer isn't responding. There we go. Okay, so it's recently been brought to my attention that ants are now crawling inside the speakers on this iMac right here. This is an old 2012 one, by the way. These iMacs have these slots on the bottom for air intakes and also for speakers. But as it turns out, ants are still crawling into this place. It started pouring rain yesterday, so the void space is getting flooded again and we're getting more drips of water coming down inside this place. But that means the ants are looking for places to go. By the way, Canada in the house. What? I just noticed three ants right here that were fighting over this corner hole in the iMac. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna play some music at high volume. And uh, wait, do I have, apparently I don't have Spotify installed on here. The speakers inside this thing are actually huge. They go up, up around both sides of the screen. So let's turn our volume up. And here we go. Enjoy this, ants. That's right, you little grease balls. Get out of here. What are you doing? Just trying to post a video. Bad ants. Only I'm allowed to post videos. I needed something with a little bit more bass, so I'm gonna let that play for a few minutes. There's actually a breeze coming out the bottom of the speaker port, so I think that should clear all the ants out. Actually, it's kind of like on the, uh, the Apple Watch. It's got a mode that when you've been in the pool, you can hit a few buttons and it makes this noise that expels all the water out of the speakers. But in this case, we're using uh, a mix that someone sent me to expel ants from a computer. Ah, life in this house. So when I moved into this place, it came with a whole bunch, actually hang on, let me turn on this light. It came with a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know if it was from previous tenants or what exactly was going on, but I was poking around with the grabber stick in this weird little room over here. Actually, let me turn on the light here. I think I can reach it. Where's the light switch? There it is. I saw this thing and I was like, wait a minute. This looks suspiciously like a thermoelectric cooler. As you can see, there's a cord hanging off the end of this thing. Here's the problem though. This thing's been here for who knows how long and it's heavy, which I'm pretty sure that means things are in it. And old nasty coolers that are full of stuff are usually also filled with mold. So let's see if we can unplug this cord. Does it unplug? No, it does not. But I was thinking this might be handy for, you know, driving across the country and keeping beverages cool and things like that. So we're gonna open the garage door and I'm gonna open the lid on this thing and I'm expected to be greeted with a whole bunch of mold. A friend that works for a disaster restoration company got me a gallon of this stuff. It's a Benefect, I don't know, it's like lemon and spice scent, but it's sort of like a botanical, botanical, all natural something or other. And supposedly you don't need to wear respirators or things like that when you're using it. But I've got that mixed up. It's pouring rain outside right now. So I think what we can do is open this door, crack the lid on that, spray a bunch of that stuff in there and then dump everything in the garbage and leave it out in the rain to cleanse itself. All right, let's see what we got here. I think it opens from the other side. Oh, oh, oh man, that, that's full of a lot of stuff. Last I checked, these coolers are like $130. So, hmm, let's see here. Yep, there's a moderate amount of filth in there. Let's, uh, Set this to spray. Looks 
looks like we've got a bottle of wine, some sort of bourbon or something. And um, uh, several bottles of wine. Some sort of plate of food. Some other moldy stuff. Oh no, I just broke the bottle. Yeah, oh well. All right, well, we're gonna let that do its thing for a little bit and off gas or whatever it wants to do. And I'm gonna come back in like an hour. And between that stuff, getting rid of the mold, because you gotta deactivate the mold. Because if you just put bleach on there, it releases all the mold spores and then you have a bigger problem. So we're gonna let this percolate for a while and then I'll be back. I think I've got some, some of those yellow dishwashing gloves or something like that. So we should be able to get all that stuff out of there. Um, yeah, good times. All right, after much scrubbing, decontamination, disinfecting, all the stuff, we've got this thing cleaned out now. And we've got the old Harbor Freight Chicago electric heater blower carpet dryer thing blasting into here and uh, should be able to get this thing dried out. Turns out the cord is not detachable, but it does have a spot where it can uh, kind of loop up and then there's a spot where the cigarette lighter thing can plug in there. I'm probably gonna replace that with a different style connector and get this thing wired up in the back of the van. Now that we have a good battery in the van, I can actually run stuff like this. I think these things pull three to six amps, somewhere in that region. This is one of their lower end ones that's only a cooler. The higher end ones, you can take the cord off and reverse it to heat and cool, blah, 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 whatever. Anyways, this thing's gonna get it all dried out. Then we're gonna do another once over with some bleach now that we know all the mold is gone. And then I might even do an ozone treatment in there, which, not sure where the ozone generator got off to, but yeah. This thing is going to be so clean that like, well, you can put food in it. <laughs> but yeah. Well, actually, this is assuming that it even works. These are pretty simple setups. It literally just has a fan and a Peltier device that goes inside and outside. There isn't really any active circuitry, so in theory it should work. I don't know. Whatever. We'll see. So I can't believe it, but I actually have one of the 110 power adapters for a thermoelectric cooler. Let's see, how many amps does this put out? Five amps. And it's got a cigarette lighter socket on the end. Let's go test this thing out and see if it works. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? That well, seems like our fan's turning. Got some airflow coming out of there. I'm not sure if this cheaper model has a fan inside or not. I don't think it does. I don't feel any airflow in there. Okay, so the way a Peltier device works, one side gets really hot and the other side gets really cold. They put it on a big heat sink and on the outside, you blow all the heat off of the hot side and then on the cold side, it's effectively pulling the heat from in here to out here. So you basically just sandwich that device between the sealed um, cooler, which I'm gonna call it, and uh, things will start getting colder in here. Oh wait, this is a perfect job for the thermal imaging camera. So almost right away, you can see that heat is starting to build up here on this, uh, on this back corner. And then inside, we should be able to see, ah, uh, yep, see it's getting cold. All right, it works, excellent. See how it's still super hot in there? That's because our uh, that's because of our Harbor Freight heater unit here. Which this thing's interesting too. Let me let me fire this up real quick. Yeah, you can see on the front of it where the heater coils are. It's starting to warm up. Air coming out of there is approximately 152 degrees. Anyways, thermal imaging is cool. I love this stuff. Oh, I just looked inside here with a flashlight. There is, in fact, a fan inside that's supposed to be spinning. Let's see if we can uh, get it started. Yep, definitely a fan in here. Looks like... 
It is in fact not getting power. Oh, there we go. Ah, now we've got airflow. So the fan was just stuck. I'm sure it was impacted with all kinds of filth and rust. So let's pull this guy back up again and we should see a little bit more movement. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go, look at that. Now that there's air circulation, it's actually starting to get cold. And it feels weird sitting in anything that's not my chair. We've got the uh, F3 here. And as you can see, these armrests are starting to get pretty cracked up and disgusting. I might try and reupholster these. I'm not exactly sure how that would work. This stuff doesn't really peel off because it's glued to the foam. But I might be able to get some other fabric and put it over the top. And these parts separate separate out and all that stuff. But anyways, I'm sitting here in the lifetime folding chair right now. In the back room, I've got a parts chair that has this style of armrest on it. They're just sort of the um, rectangular style. The ones on here are waterfall. I'm not sure how these are gonna work or even if they'll fit or whatever. But we're gonna pull these off of here and give it a try. These ones have Allen screws that hold them on. You can see Allen screw. Okay, there we go. Flat piece. As you can see, there's a boatload of mounting holes on the bottom there. Let's turn this thing around. And this is held on with Phillips. No, it's not Phillips. And one of them is blocked back here. Right, let's see if we can get these off. The problem is the other screw is buried down here. I don't think... No, that's not sliding anywhere. <sighs> I'm gonna have to take these things off. This F3 has the armrest conversion kit on it. So it comes with these little standoffs. They're actually supposed to go lengthwise, but this backrest isn't designed for the chair and they tend to interfere. Right, let's see if we can get these off of here now and see if these new ones will fit at all. Which actually might be good. On the side with the joystick, I can't... Well, that's a long ways out of reach now. <laughs> um, on the side with the joystick on it, I actually can't flip up that armrest at all because it, it interferes with the, uh, the seat back. So if these fit, maybe that'll solve that problem. This isn't usually too big of a deal. I typically transfer out of the left side of my chair. But yeah, the conversion kit comes with these round bars. So in theory, we can just kind of put this on here like that. How's that going to line up? I forget which way we want this thing. Actually, that works out okay. Nice. All right, well. Back in with the screws. Did I put this whole thing on here upside down? I think I did. Yeah, so see how right here we've got this space and then on the other side, there's like a whole channel. So I actually put this thing together completely incorrectly when I set it up the first time, which I was just making this chair work for me temporarily while I was waiting for a new chair, which by the way, is still to be determined. I mentioned on the live stream this week that my insurance company, well not the insurance company, the DME kind of screwed up and forgot to submit everything to insurance for final approval. So they're like, oh yeah, it's just going to be another six to eight weeks, don't worry about it. So I'm not quite sure what happened with my uh, DME, but I thought I was being nice and not bothering them. Lo and behold, me not calling them was a problem apparently because I waited about a month before I got a hold of them to get a status update. And they were like, oh, whoops. Is what it is, I guess. Okay, so we're gonna tighten these down preliminarily, just enough to get our placement correct. I think all the way forward is where we want this. Yeah, that works. So now we can tighten these down. Now we can put this on and we have access to the screws that are normally hidden underneath here. And then use this to actually cinch them on here tight. Now this can go back on here. And there we go, new armrest. 
But yeah, you can see the difference here. This one is significantly wider than the other one. It does, the waterfall style comes down to the side and has padding through all through here. Whereas these just have the plastic right there, but I don't know, good enough for now. I don't have any more of these lying around. Oh, like I said, I think we might try and reupholster these just for no reason. These, uh, I believe this just comes off. Yeah, this just comes off, gross. And it's got like vinyl glued on it, so. Maybe we can cut up an old pair of jeans or something and make some weird denim arm pads. All right, well, uh, seems to fit me okay. I am noticing though that this side is higher than this side. I don't know if I did that on purpose or not, but yeah. I think they'll get the job done. That'll do. All right, the workbench is getting a little bit crowded here. So, headed out to that car show this weekend, and I figured it would be nice to have a phone charger and some RGB lighting and stuff like that on my chair. So last night I worked on getting, I guess I could point the camera at my face. I worked on getting a power converter installed on the back of the chair. I'll show you that in a little bit. I just spent about 45 minutes tearing the house apart trying to find this other little cell phone charging module that, focus, that I know I have somewhere, but I just moved. There's a couple things I haven't found yet. One, this box full of two-way radios and walkie-talkies. And two, my freaking glue gun. Those are the only two things I haven't been able to find. And I'm pretty sure they're all in the same box. Anyways, we're gonna check out this RGB right now that a friend, Joe, gave me. I've got a whole bunch of this. I've seen it around the house. I'm trying to think of where. Oh, looks like we've only got one RGB strip here. We're gonna need at least four of these. Although we have some extension cables. I think I know where my RGB lighting is. I think. I'll be right back. And I'm not gonna spend 45 minutes this time. If I can't find it in seven minutes, we're going to abort. Okay, so I wasn't able to find the RGB, but I found some other things. Turns out I had another one of these USB charging things that wasn't mounted to the other chair. And look, it has little, little wings that fold down on each side so you can mount it to stuff. So this will work for charging. It's a little bit large. I would have rather had a single one, but I also found some of my right angle XLR connectors and completely off point, a bunch of emergency vehicle strobes that I used to have, complete with a uh, switch panel. I figure if we're going to car shows and stuff, it'd be cool to have random blinking lights, so I might put these on the chair. I don't know. Oh, and I found these little clamps too. These things are so handy for holding cameras and other stuff. Can't find the RGB anywhere. I think I'm just gonna order more on Amazon. I have so much of the stuff though. I've seen it somewhat recently, like some of them in the last month or two, but it's like $12 for a setup with like four strips of light and stuff. So I think I'm gonna order that, get it here tomorrow, and then, um, yeah, something. Hallelujah. So this is not the RGB I was looking for. There's six of these tubes. These ones are not power efficient at all, but holy cow are they bright. I've got the 24 to 12 volt converter installed on the back of the chair now, so I think we should be all right, but let's try plugging this in. It's like Christmas. So this is an old Cytron controller. I'm not quite sure how it's supposed to work and the power button doesn't seem to do anything. Anyways, I think this stuff will work. I'm gonna untangle this rat's nest. It's got a bank of connectors too, so we don't have to run them all. 12 volts, 1500 milliamps. Yeah, that should be perfect. The uh, power converter I installed in the back of the chair can handle 10 amps, so, yeah. Okay, now, I'm finally gonna hop into the chair and show you what's going on in the back of this thing. And uh, we'll see about getting some of these things installed. Here I am back on the floor, and uh, we're just gonna go quick and dirty with this RGB. There's, uh, let's see, will this light work? There's some random mounts for extra things on the bottom of this chair, so I just jam these tubes in here. The nice thing about these is they are, they're hard plastic. They're somewhat weather sealed, but not really. But it gives you a lot more options to mount these as opposed to just that, uh, uh, wires are coming out on the end. 
it gives you a lot more options to mount these because they're more rigid. So we've just got these things kind of tied back here, got them tied up here. I'm gonna trim off these zip tie tails. Then we're gonna try and stick some more over there somewhere. And we're gonna run the wires to the back. And the skylight, as per usual, is stupid bright. <laughs> uh, yeah, had to get a little bit more creative on this side. The, uh, the recline actuator is right here, so you gotta make sure nothing gets behind it. I wound up just looping a couple of zip ties through this hole and back around the pan here. And then they loop around the two RGB strips here. And up front, I was able to run a couple of zip ties behind this bracket and hold these on here. Again, because these are rigid, uh, it makes it a little easier to mount them. If it was LED tape, I could just stick it to the bottom of this, I suppose, but I don't know. I think these will work all right. And now, as promised, here's the back of the chair. I spent a lot of time getting this wiring sorted out. I used a bunch of random connectors, different colored wire, wire sheathing. But essentially what we have going on here, the heart of the system is this 24 to 12 volt power converter. This is actually designed for onboard ventilators. This thing can put out 10 amps at 12 volts, which means it pulls about five amps at 24 volts at full load. We powered it off of the RNET bus, which is capable of reliably supplying eight amps at a time. So it's plugged into the multiplexer or whatever that thing's called back here, the multi-port thing. Then that comes up here. We've got a fuse box. I've had this fuse box forever. I've been trying to find a project to use it on, but yeah, it's got a little screw cover goes on there. Then from there, our power goes out into the switch box here. And this is a remote turn on for this module. So when I flick this on, you'll see a little green light appear. Maybe you will. Yeah, there it is down in there. I think the LED got pushed inside. And when you turn it off, you'll hear the little relay click in a few seconds. So that powers all that. This box here, this is where I was going to put that cell phone charger that sticks out right here. That would have fit perfectly in this hole right here and then we just have you know two USB ports sticking out. But I screwed that up pretty badly. I think I might get another one of these because that seems like a really good spot to have this as opposed to this giant box here, which would have to be mounted somewhere else and extra wiring run. I suppose I could try and put it under the seat somewhere, but there isn't really a lot of space down there. But anyways, so for right now, I just wired up this XLR port as our 12 volt output. I'm probably gonna pull the cover back off this and wire in the RGB lighting differently. But basically this is our 12 volt positive, this is our 12 volt ground, and then over here is nothing. So that way, in theory, if someone accidentally plugs in a 24 volt charger to this, it won't do anything. Hopefully. <laughs> I had to remove my GoPro camera from the back of the chair. I don't think, yeah, there isn't quite enough clearance here to put that back on with this power box here, but I'll figure out something else. I was wanting to wire up an actual camera with the DVR anyways, which actually, I have one right here. This is like off the back of a, uh, a delivery truck or something like that. This is one of those weatherproof night vision cameras that's designed to be mounted on the back of a vehicle. So I think ideally, I may not do it on this chair, but once I get my new one, whatever that's gonna be, um, I will mount this thing up on the back. That way we'll have a solid camera running all the time with one of those little compact DVRs that you can get on Amazon or eBay or whatever. Oh, we've got another power adapter here. What is this? Ooh, 2.4 amp. Will it run on 24 volts? Doesn't say what the input is. But here, check it out. Look how beautifully these things fit in here. Well, there's wiring in the way at the moment, but, but yeah, that would basically just sit right in there and then we have our USB charger there. I'm gonna have to look up what the input voltage is on this. This thing might work. Work in progress. I'm going to finish the RGB right now. I have no idea where I'm gonna mount the controller for that. I'll find a spot though. There's always room somewhere. We're testing this thing out. I found some random listing on eBay that said it was 12 and 24 volt compatible. So it's charging this phone. We're putting out about an amp. We bumped it up to 24 volts and it does not appear to be getting overly hot. And it's pulling less amperage than it does at 12 volts, which makes sense. If we turn this back down here. There we go. Now it's pulling about half an amp. If we bump it back up to 24, Uh, a little less than a quarter amp. 
So math checks out. I think we're good. I'm going to solder up some leads on this thing, get it jammed in the hole, and then we'll have our USB charger. That'll do. Okay. I think we're done for now. I really need to get a lift or something. Well, I've got two wheelchair lifts right back there. I need to get one of them set up though so I can use it to pick chairs up off the ground. Because as you can see, I've been doing all my work on the floor here. And well, the back doesn't appreciate that. Anyways, without further ado, allow me to show you what took an exceedingly insane amount of time. All right, here's the back of the F3. And we use this ventilator power converter thing. The power comes from back here. I think I mentioned that before. It goes up through the fuse box into the switch here that lets me turn it on and off, down into here. And this is what's powering the RGB lights. We have the RGB lighting controller right here. And when we flip the switch, ta-da, there's light. It's pretty bright. Now, what I also did was, it's gonna be hard to see because it's kind of dark in here, but I put that other cell phone charger right here in this hole. And if we plug this thing in, ta-da, it's charging. And we've got two ports on there. That thing can supposedly put out like 4.8 amps total or something like that, but well, let me just show you underneath here what our RGB installation looks like. And it's gonna be kind of hard to show, but we've got our uh, RGB lights. There's two per side. It looks like a little more of a mess than it actually is, but the hub for our uh, RGB stuff is right here. I got all the wiring tied up. I've got sheathing on it. These are all zip tied in place. I cut all these wires to length because they were ridiculously long. So here you can see on the back, we've got our auxiliary wiring. It comes down between that blue thing and the back of the chair. Then it goes into another harness down here. That comes over here, loops around underneath. And then on this side over here, I actually can't see the camera, so I don't know if you can see that, but the other lights over there come across. Everything has wiring loom material on it, so it's all really clean, really well protected. And I don't think we're gonna have any issues with anything here. Yeah, I think it turned out all right. Anyways, at least in, um, what am I trying to say? Well, I wanted to get the lighting on there for the trip this weekend, because I don't know, it's kind of fun when you're running around car shows and stuff at night. Wanted to have the cell phone charger on there, so we've got that. I do carry giant battery banks with me, especially when I'm live streaming anyways, but whatever. It's, this is one of those things I've been putting off doing it for, hang on, let me get back in my chair. Okay, there we go. Uh, my back does not like sitting on the floor, but it's worth it. We got some lights, we got some accessories. Okay, what I was saying, it's been probably three years since I've had a chair that I've actually customized the way I wanted with like lighting and accessories and other stuff. I still have not yet put headlights on this. I still need to get a different joystick that has the lighting buttons on it, and then I'll put headlights on this thing. But one surefire way to get a new chair is to do all the customizations of this one. And I'm sure tomorrow I'm gonna get an email. <coughs> I'm sure tomorrow I'm gonna get an email that's like, oh hey, uh, we approved your new chair. It'll be here in two weeks. Anyways, tired of waiting around. I just decided to do it. Um, yeah. Anyways, I'm, uh, oh, I have some stuff delivered from Amazon. I'm working on the streaming setup. Last stream drove me insane, it kept disconnecting. We've got a way to prevent that now. I'm gonna have three cellular connections and I'm using actually a Raspberry Pi to bond all the connections together for the encoder. So, now that I've gotten this chair sorted out, I'm gonna go play around some Python script and work on getting things set up. But here, let's see, can you uh, see these lights? I don't know, I think they're neat. Okay, I'll be back after a while.